redzonesports.bet, the British home of American sports. Hello and welcome to the Sports Heads in conjunction with Red Zone Sports. We're here to review week five and to preview week six. I'm Kevin Cato. Simon. What's your Mil last name? Milham. Milham. Mil okay, that's all right. Milham. <laughs> Mil all right. And <laughs> Sam Morgan. Sam the band Morgan down on the, uh, on the far end. We're here to talk about what happened in week five. Let's start with that. Big stuff in week five was the injuries that occurred. Let's start with the New York Giants, Odell Beckham and Brandon Marshall going down. Yeah, and they've lost uh, four wide receivers in the same game. You know, they're down to, to bare bones at, uh, in New York now. Uh, it's, a re it's a real major issue for them. Um, there's Sam Bradford went down as well in Minnesota. Uh, the chocolate knee, uh, that, that uh, didn't hold up. Uh, Chris Conley as well. That's a, that's one that not many people are talking about. Wide receiver Kansas City, the guy that's been stretching the field. You have to game plan in every game, so that's going to be an issue going down for. for Kansas what about City. for the, the New York Giants? You know, when you lose Odell Beckham and you lose uh, Brandon Marshall. I think now you're losing personalities as well, leaders, go-to people. Mm -hmm. There, I think we're going to see a lot of pressure now on Roger Lewis. I think Engram ended up in, in wide receiver at one point, maybe in a sort of slot position. Yeah. So, you know, they are at bare bones, but. You lose some weapons, but as I say, coming back to the personality, the guys in and around. I mean, you saw the reaction when he went down. Mm. You know, the whole team just lowered completely. Yeah. You're not having a great season already. In that, you're coming up to that game, you're four and zero, and then you lose your top player. I think the season is is a write off now, and it is a building session. But maybe it's an opener for people to go. We need a backup for a backup. Now. Yeah, you've got, you've got I, Roger yeah. Lewis is the only healthy wide receiver there. Mm -hmm. He's been there all season. I mean, you've got a couple of scrubs coming mm. in basically it's and they've, they've got to go to Denver as well the no-fly zone that'll be interesting but also when yeah. you look at them you know this this New York Giants team you lose your top receivers but they didn't have a running game to go with it anyway mm. so now you're talking about really being yeah. at rock bottom and you know Eli's will have to come <laughs> up with some tremendous stuff for it to happen but we, we see what new was New York Giants their deal has happened on the offensive side of the football mm -hmm. what about the Houston Texans everything that happened on the yeah. defensive side J.J. Watt and Whit uh, Whitney Marsalis, both those guys out for the season. Again, I'm, my point about personalities. I mean, J.J. Watt has obviously been a major figure in that Houston Texans defense for a number of years now. But can they get the same um, sort of drive from him off the field just to keep them going? I mean, I touched back on it saying um, they, were, they impressed me in the defense because they got the ball back to Deshaun Watson so mm. quickly. Can they keep doing that now? And will it be a case of actually they're going to have to now grind out a few games because they can't stop the opposition? Got much faith in Javon Clowney picking his game up. He's doing pretty decent so far this season, but he now has to go to that superstar level mm -hmm. if this Houston team is going to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, they've got a good young quarterback um, who, who really helps them out. He seems to be growing um, in stature there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they cope now. Um, but, I, and the Giants as well. I mean, they they bought um, Brandon Albert back as well, left tackle to because Eric Flowers has been the problem for for years and mm -hmm. years. And so those two teams have both got real real issues. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that the Texans are done, and I think um, the Giants are obviously done. The uh, you know Buffalo Bills, my hometown, the Buffalo Bills. You know <laughs> they lose Charles Clay. When you look at these, say Charles Clay, is that such a big deal? When you look at what they have outside of their receivers, because everybody is somewhere else. You mm -hmm. know that could be a big blow for them. Yep. Luckily, they have a bye week coming up, so I think that's a big help to help them get over that hump. I was really, really disappointed when he left Miami. He's one of the better tight ends. He's also one of the one thing they forget about with tight ends is the blocking. Mm -hmm. He's a really good blocking tight end as well, and they're going to miss that. Well, as well, since you mentioned Miami, since you want to bring no. the name of, <laughs> of Miami and that quarterback situation that they have going on there with uh, Jay Cutler, they win last week, but is it time for Matt Moore to step in to that spot in Miami? That's a $10 million question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Literally a $10 million question because they paid Jay Cutler that sort of money to come in and do a job. And I, I, t I go back to what you said previously in off air. When a guy's got retirement in his head, how difficult is that for him to come back out of that, that mindset? And Jay Cutler's all over the place. I mean, you, you look at the Miami receiving core, it's great. 
you know, you've got Devontae Parter, Stills, and, and, and uh, Landry. You've also got Jay Ajay there. They've got a great receiving set, a great uh, running game. Um, and Cutler just seems to be absolutely floundering. So they got everything but a quarterback. Is yeah, what you're it, absolutely. Saying. Yeah. So what about the how, how's that offensive like line Moore. working? <laughs> uh, well, Chris Forster is uh, unfortunately uh, well, uh, he's gone. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the best way to, to put it. Um, resigned and rightly so. And now they've got uh, Dave DeGugliano, who served under Tony Sperano from 2009 to about 2011. They've had to bring him back in. The offensive line, the guards are a real problem. Um, they beat Tennessee simply because Tennessee were a 3-4 defense, a uh, 3-4 attack. Um, three, basically what that means is you've got three guys rushing. The guards aren't pressured as much. It'll be interesting to see when they go up against a 4-3 like they will in Atlanta this week. Is it time for Jay Cutler? Oh. To go and I've been, I've been, it's in. bored me from the start. To be fair, Jay <laughs> Cutler. I mean, what, what, like you mentioned there, you said about ten million reasons. That's why he's come back. Mm. Oh, it's an extra bit of a payday for me. Is there any pressure on whether he fails or not? Has he had this amazing career that everyone's going to go, Jay Cutler? Yes, mm. it's great to have him in the, in the league again. No. But what about you know the, the guy that brings Jay Cutler back is the coach Gates because he dealt with him in Shy Town. So is there pressure on Gates because? I mean, you the one chose the guy. You know that was your your selection to bring him back, and also to help us to get rid of ten million, ten million good ones. Yeah, of course, the pressure's there. The, you know, you, he's had to he's had to sell that to someone. Someone's had to sign that check. He doesn't sign mm -hmm. his own checks. So yeah, of course, there's going to be some pressure on him. The way to turn that around though is, is results. But loyalty. Are they well. getting the results that they they want? Well, no. So it's got to be time to change. Well, let's stay on the quarterback situation. Also, we're talking about Jay Cutler mm -hmm. being formerly with Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mitchell Trubisky gets his first run on Monday mm -hmm. night, and what kind of mm -hmm. grades we giving out for 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 Mitchell? Well, he was a second round pick out of North Carolina, and they gave up an awful lot to climb to get him. Uh, so obviously at some point John Fox was going to have to put him in um, over Mike Glennon. Now we know Fox likes experienced quarterbacks but he's been under pressure from those upstairs to change things. They've got a great running game. Um, Trubisky is, uh, he did, did what he showed in pre-season as well. He's, he's had a nice game. They've rolled him out about 8 out of 22 times out of the pocket I think. And um, you know he, he's, he moves about the pocket well. He's got a nice presence about him, and I think you know he will grow into the role. But he's very, very inexperienced. I mean, he didn't have very many games in college. He was a four, you know it took him four years to to get the starting role at North Carolina. And the guy that uh, he tried to beat out in the first two years was a backup with the Jets. So and and wasn't even a quarterback backup with the Jets. He was playing another position. So how good really is he? There's a lot of hope in Chicago, but the, they've got to sell it. They've, they've come out and said, yes, he was, uh, and, and John Fox, who never says anything, tries mm -hmm. to avoid media, comes out and, and compares him almost in the same sentence as Joe Montana, because he coached Montana when he was young. And that's a bit of a reach, let's, let's be honest. I mean, here's a guy that, you know, since high school, has only uh, basically started 14, 15 games mm -hmm. since, since being a senior in high school. So, you know, now you're jumping into the highest league out there, yeah. um, you know, but Monday Night Football, they were in the game mm -hmm. and had an opportunity to win. No game tape on him. Mm -hmm. Take what you've got, use the advantages that you're going to take now. No one's going to know what you're about. There isn't enough game tape on there, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, John Fox doesn't use rookies. We know that at the QP position. I think obviously he's going to have to probably prove a few people wrong if he's got that hunger. I mean, the trick play kind of showed there that he, you know he's got he's got something about him to try that on the big stage. Mm -hmm. You know, has he got the weapons though? It's Past that, it. he's had to. Well, that, that's oh, that's, 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 that's an absolutely no. He does not have the weapons <laughs> in Chicago. I mean, there again, mm -hmm. that's another team where the weapons are are somewhere else. But you know, for mm -hmm. me, I look at Trubisky and I go. Maybe I'll give him a C in that initial game. And for him, that is a great grade because to come up with an A, then that means where do you go from there? Mm -hmm. So I think for him, you know, there's growth, you know, that, that will happen throughout time that he can get better. Um, that they'll have to have patience because he doesn't have that other personnel that you need to exceed. Mm -hmm. I think we look at him and you compare him to a Deshaun Watson. Watson has mm -hmm. the receivers. Watson has the number three running game in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So you got certain things that are a little bit different that he has that you don't have in Chi Town. But you're talking about not having anything. What about those Cleveland Browns? But their rookie finally got a chance to get out there and get a couple sacks. Uh, Mr. Uh, Garrett. Miles Garrett gets his first start, one of the first plays of the game that he's out there, he gets a sack, ends up with two sacks in the contest. That is a bright point for that for the Cleveland and the Cleveland Brown organization. What way to announce yourself? Mm -hmm. 
it, 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 that is the way to do it. Pump yourself up that much, just take it out on the quarterback. I mean, that, that's got to be a nice buzz for him. But mm. for me, the Browns, oh, dare I say it, I think they've shown a bit of promise and a bit of improvement there. Yep. Um, and Definitely. to have that now, I've seen a few of the youngsters obviously coming through, yeah. or, um, you know, like uh, you Kaiser know what? as well. Yeah. I wish I could agree with you. I wish I could agree <laughs> with you. I mean, you know, it, I, some promise. Sunday, they get to the red zone three times. They're in the red zone, and they're going to make Kaiser to make a play. Mm -hmm. And three times, he goes and make a play, and he makes the wrong play. Instead of just keeping it simple. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I look at that, I'm thinking, well, they could have won the game on Sunday. You know, it was there. The opportunity was there for him. So I don't know if it's, you know, you're looking at Kaiser or you're looking at Hugh Jackson as far as what the, because Hugh was a guy mm -hmm. calling the plays out there for that Cleveland Brown team. I mean, they're, 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 they're fighting. Mm -hmm. That's one thing about it. They have, not give, they have not given up the ghost. They are still fighting. It's coming through on, his, it's coming through on the helmet. So no, he's, got, he's, got, he's got to have some sort of direction there. He, is, sure. a, he is a rookie quarterback. No There's got to be someone to guide him at that point. But we, you know, we've touched on weapons. Mm -hmm. What's he got? What, what is, is there really for him the tight, to, to go out? The tight ends are good. The yeah. receivers are not good. The quarterback is learning. The defensive mm. interior is a lot better. Um, Shelton's back. Coley's been a nice find. Um, Ogba's done quite well without Miles Garrett being in there, to be fair. The linebackers are better than they were. Schobert showed up. Um, Kirksley, he's been quite impressive actually. Collins is injured, so that strength, the linebackers, um, when he comes back, that's going to be a bit of a strength of their team. The cornerbacks actually are better without Joe Hayden, who went to Pittsburgh. Um, like I say, the tight ends are decent, the receivers are rubbish. Um, the offensive line is actually better with, with Treader in there, and, um, and Zeitler's done well as well. So, uh, you know. Coleman's done well at right tackle. There, is, there are a there lot of good a, signs. Sorry, I'm going to name. Else you want to name on the team, man? Let <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no. me bring up GMs no, again. Just, you know, I'm just just yeah. showing okay. off here. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Someone's got to okay. give Cleveland a bit of love. It's not yeah. going to be you, no, no, is it? No, you know what? There's I only one team in Is that it was a game that was in their hands, but I just you know you get in the red zone three times and you turn the ball over on three occasions because of plays you got the quarterback trying to make that right now he is not capable of making mm -hmm. you know that's just for me it's you know it's it's like uh uh there was a say know your personnel and i just one of those cases of you know yep. of the knowing your personnel and what he's able to deliver right now at that time no that's, that's fair i think yeah, in the past though we've seen in the browns they've never really got the draft right i don't think either no. i think they've always oh, yeah, there's, got, no, there's been no question yeah. about that so to see a pro as i say promise in a qb there and a couple obviously yeah. defensive um, sort of I I acquisitions should we say can they get it right to build on now? I think they should take what they or have seen from the Jets. Everyone wrote off the Jets. Five. They've got especially five you. first and second round. Especially round. you. Oh, yeah. yeah, especially you. Okay. Did, I Raise did write off the hands, Jets. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to be fair, I wrote off the whole of New York. So okay. at least I've got the Giants bit <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. yeah, I'm going to say they've one they've and two. They've got five first, five first and second round picks yesterday. They've got them next year. They've got yep. 13 picks in the draft. Mm. You know, And they still managed to mess the draft up year in, year out. This is a problem. Well, you know, I, I, when you look at it from, from this year, we we'll just have to see the next year when they have those draft choices. we we'll have to see. But I always say in American sports, there's really only, in all of American sports, basketball, football, hockey, um, um, baseball, there's only about maybe five or six teams, general managers, organizations that do a quality job of drafting and pulling their personnel mm -hmm. year in and year out. I mean, you look at the San Antonio Spurs in basketball, consistent. They're one of the top teams mm -hmm. every year in basketball. How do you stay one of the top teams for 20 years? Mm -hmm. You look at the New England Patriots with Belichick and, and what those guys do. Mm -hmm. One of the top teams in the National Football League, so that means you're not able to get the first or the top picks, but they're able to do it year in and year out. And it just goes. I mean, you got Cleveland. They're still trying to find their way as mm -hmm. far as what they're going to do in the draft. Mm -hmm. But one, one guy who... um. I think it was a gold mine when they found him in the draft. Frank Gore mm. is now the seventh leading rusher in the history of the National Football League, and he could move up into the top four, um, by the, of the top five by the end of, of the season. Now, mm. I throw this question out. Is Frank Gore a Hall of Famer? Yes. Quite simple answer, yes. I mean, you look at the players around him that are in the Hall of Fame, people that blow him in the Hall of Fame. Yes, he is. No doubt about it. He's carried teams. He's had, you know, what has he had as far as quarterback goes? Nothing. He hasn't had a decent quarterback for years, and uh, he's carried that team on his shoulders. Um, you know, J Joe Montana, for instance, he had Jerry Rice. He had all those great receivers. He had uh, Craig. 
and they had a great defense. You know, San Francisco were, were a good team with Frank Gore there. They're not without him. Can't deny that. I think when you once you hit that sort of top ten mark, then you have to be sort of classed as that as well. And the, the yards and stats obviously don't lie. <laughs> What I have liked about him is, is the, the continuous aggression from him. I think we're running back as the years go on. I think you can probably lose a little bit of that aggression at times. I think even sometimes we've got sort of beast mode when we see him at times. There, there are days you can tell it's, it's not his day. I'm just like, he's not feeling it to get past that. Deal. But Frank just keeps going. And yeah, I wouldn't want to go up against him, that's for sure. Another guy who just was able to grab a new team this past week, and I'm sure he said, <laughs> I'm glad to be out of that past happy offense in New Orleans, is Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson is 485 yards away from becoming the 10th leading rusher in the history of the National Football League. He goes, he lands with the uh, Carolina uh, or, or the Arizona Cardinals. Solid move for him or? Great move for him, great move for the Cardinals. I'm a Cardinals fan, as you guys know. So for me, it's, it's quite a, an achievement for us to bring him in, actually, as, especially with the loss of uh, David Johnson as well. Mm. I think we've needed to replace that. Um, OK, Chris Johnson, thanks for turning up. He's done us a little bit of a shame, job. It's, it is a shame. Mm. But hey, if we get uh, the, the right AP, who's going to be uh, angry from uh, obviously what's happened over at New Orleans, I think we could end up with uh, something special if, if he is keeps it that too, Is it too late for that Arizona team as far as the season goes? Not necessarily, but I don't think bringing Adrian Peterson in. I mean, it's, it, you know, he's he's slowed down by the weight of money he's earned in in in, uh, in the Saints. I mean, was it 2.4 million for four games? I quite like that salary, wouldn't you? That'd be pretty good. And you know, he's now become a he's, he was a uh, what was he? So a, a Viking, a Saint, and a Cardinal. It's a shame so he didn't go to the Colts because so he could have played with the Pope. You got, you got what? Six, huh? 600, I'm not working out. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a journalist, <laughs> not a mathematician. It's a lot of money. It's more than we're on. <laughs> it's a little bit but more than know, we're on. I think, I think it helps the Saints, actually, I think, more than anything else. The mm -hmm. ship getting out, Mark Ingram gets more time, Alvin Kamara gets more time. Who's, you know, he's, he's really looking as though he's the next Aaron Sproles. I think he's, he's going to be a hell of a player for New Orleans. But also, you look at that uh, Arizona team, the first team in the history to have two 2,000-yard rushers on the same team at the same time. And uh, Chris Johnson, he did it as well. But what about your, your player of the week from week five? And we'll start with you. I'm sure somebody strange and unique. <laughs> strange and unique. Yeah, it's my, my MO, that is, isn't it? An old man crush this okay. week. I've got All an old right. man crush. Adam Vinatieri, 44 years old, nailed a 51-yard field goal for the Colts to beat the San Francisco 49ers in, uh, in a, a real ding-dong battle. Um, what I love about Adam Vinatieri is his absolute consistency. I mean, the whole course of the NFL changed for me, you know, back in 2002. He nails a 45-yard field goal in the divisional championship game against New England in the snow, and it was a you know minus 20 wind chill. 45-yard field goal takes them to overtime. And they no, let's don't it. forget about New England cheated. They bring the machine out there, <laughs> wipe the field <laughs> off. It, you know, let's get it together now. Have you kicked a 45? Well, you probably have been in well, Buffalo. Yeah, you know, well, so. yeah, I've kicked a couple. <laughs> you know, <I've, laughs> you know. But then you know, then they they beat the Rams in the Super Bowl. Vinatieri, last last second field mm -hmm. goal. They beat Carolina again, same thing, late field goal. Two years after that, or a year after that, they go and beat uh, the Eagles. Fourth quarter field goal, Adam, Adam Vinatieri. Three Super Bowls, all on the kicking of Adam Vinatieri. And if he hadn't have made that 45-yard field goal back in the snow against Oakland, where would New England be? That's, really? good, that's good, man. But we talked about the player last week. We yeah, were yeah, yeah, history, yeah, yeah. man. I, I thought he was going to go did, black and white for a minute there. Right? When, he was a, <laughs> he when he was a kid and all that. <laughs> he kicks uh, four field goals. Okay. All right, well, we're going, I'm old enough to remember. I'm old enough to remember. Sam, who's your player of the week, man? I'm a little bit worried by the older man crush each week as well. Yeah, okay, okay. I've been around. Just keeping it for last week. For last week, okay. Because if I talk about this guy's achievements, we will be have a new show. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, pressure's on, 15 seconds on the clock. You can go for the field goal and take it to overtime. No. Different idea, I'll go and win the game. You, for me, greatest of all time at the moment is getting very close to Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. right now. It's fair. Yeah, I mean, yep. the, the guy just does not fail. You know, when, when does he fail? I can't put it on there. And last week just showed again. I was sat there watching the game, and I was like, "He's not going for that, surely." Like, just composure, get everyone back in the huddle again, and then we'll go into overtime. No, throws that winning touchdown, and then everyone was just around the stadium. Was just, I think even the Dallas people was a bit like, 
What can you do? It's the way what he throws the ball. That's the, the, the thing with, with him is that you know you've got all these great quarterbacks like the Montanas and Marinos mm. and everything else. Now Marino was a strong arm, quick release quarterback. Aaron Rodgers holds onto the ball, but the way the precision and mm. the actual spiral that he got, it's not about power, it's the actual spiral, the tight spirals and the, 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 the heat that he puts on those things. It's difficult to be a he, receiver in Green Bay. He, he is in the matrix for me. You know, it's, at that moment it slows down. It, it just, he mm. can read that so much. And like you say, yeah, the precision is there, but it just makes mm. it like he's got all the time in the world. Every time he gets it. Is it uh, obviously the offensive line obviously plays a big part of that, but he can still give you that extra second. So one day we'll have that conversation about the uh, the, uh, the, the the greatest of, uh, of all time, because sometimes mm. we just really throw those accolades out of, mm. you know, whoever happens to be the person <laughs> at that time is always the greatest yep. of, of all time. But, um, you know, for me, it's the Jacksonville Jags defense. Five interceptions against Ben Roethlisberger, and it jumps them to the top of the table in that division that they're in. So for me, I thought the Jacksonville Jags, you know, you look at them defensively, they did a tremendous job of taking care of what they needed to do on the defensive end to be able to come up with that game by putting the pressure on Ben Roethlisberger, by the guys on the, on the offside on the, uh, the other end. You know, when the ball happens to come into your hand, get, sometimes they go, they got the guys playing defense for a reason because they can't catch the ball. But those guys did a tremendous job of when Ben fed them, they ate and they took, they took care of it and they intercepted the footballs. The question you, you just yep. posed there is Ben fed them. Why would you throw 55 times against a number one defensive pass game? You know, that, why would you do that? Why would you game plan? Todd Haley has got an awful lot of issues as far as vanilla game planning at the moment. And you've got Levy on Bell in the back there. And, and Jacksonville's run defense, it really isn't very good. Why would you throw 55 times into it? It makes, makes them look great, really. But also, too, but it, it became a 55-type situation was because all of a sudden you get yourself in a hole. You can, and then all of a sudden you get yourself in a hole. You're trying to dig yourself out of a hole. And the only way you're going to dig yourself out of a hole with the quickness is putting the ball up in the air. I get it, but they, yep. they, they knew what was coming. That was the thing. You know, that all the routes were right across the middle. They, the, you know, even one of the Jacksonville players came out this week and said, we knew what was coming. And, and that's a real problem for, for Pittsburgh going forward. They've got to shake it up. Well, they have a, a quality receiver in Antonio Brown, but what about another guy on another team with the Arizona Cardinals, Larry Fitzgerald? 200 consecutive games. Man, that's tremendous. 200 consecutive games Your that team. he has caught a pass. He's going to keep going. Mm -hmm. He's that target. You know, I had him sort of a player of the week last week, I think, the previous week, just because he's that go-to mm. person. I think Palmer banks his lucky stars every yep. time he sees that guy on the field. And I think every quarterback that's uh, obviously played with Larry will, will say the same yeah. thing. But he, yeah. his consistency is just there. And he, mm. Does he look like he's aging physically? I don't think he does at the moment. When, and when you look at his, his numbers, we'll see 200 um, receptions, consecutive games that he caught a pass. You know, Tony Gonzalez is second at the tight end position, um, who has 211. So, you know, if he c continues the way he's going, he'll catch or tie Tony Gonzalez at the end of the season. But the guy who's ahead of him on Jerry Rice, he ain't gonna never catch Jerry Rice. He's gonna have to retire a long time before he gets to, uh, to Jerry Rice. But when, you know, when you look at him and you go, all-time great receivers, does he jump out at you as an all-time great, let's say two, three, or four, all-time great receiver? That's a tough question. I say he's a Hall of Famer. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there's, there's no doubt about that. But is he in the top four or five? Well, currently, yeah, m by, you know, by sort of modern-day standards, yes, he is. But, you know, you, do, you, do you put him with the, in, in the pantheon of, of top receivers? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I, it's a tough one to call. I, great receiver, though. Mm -hmm. Great receiver. I think the only thing that's missing from him is that Super Bowl ring. To the but then people will take it a little bit more seriously because he's probably going to come up with a play then in, mm. in that, that big game. I think we had that chance uh, against the Steelers and mm. that was a dark day, but <laughs> very dark day. But I think then people will take him seriously. It's probably not going to happen and I really hate to say that, but I'd still put him up there as one of the, one of the greatest, but in that top four category is going to be very difficult. He's a Hall of Famer in your book, yeah? Oh, 100%. Well, I'm Kev Simon. Sam, a big thanks to uh, Red Zone Sports from the group here. But remember, if you want to get ahead, check in to Sports Heads. RedZoneSports.bet, the British home of American sports.
Sports is. Don't forget, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, but you can also hit us on Twitter, Instagram. We would love to hear from you. We're trying to take the program from next level to next level to next level. Enjoy.